chapter 9. And Paul, in that chapter, talks a little bit about the role, his role within leading that church and trying to help that church grow to maturity. And I thought today we might do something a little bit different. So I asked my father-in-law uh, to, to come. His name is, uh, this is Steve. So say hi, Steve. Hi, Steve. Yeah, yeah, it makes him feel more comfortable. Thanks. Um, and, uh, if you feed me, I feel more comfortable. Yeah, yeah. So what, what, uh, what I thought we might do is Steve uh, was, was in a church as a pastor, still carries those responsibilities as a pastor for a number of years. And I thought it might be interesting for us to do kind of an interview because Paul in that chapter talks about his role in leading that church. And so I thought we might mix things up a little bit here today and us kind of talk back and forth about what it means to lead a church, be a pastor, so that, uh, so that you maybe have a better understanding uh, of the church as a whole, uh, of Awaken in particular, know a little bit more of my heart, why I do what I do, and uh, what I do. So, but uh, I'm excited to be able to do this, and we'll just kind of jump right in. Is that all right? That sounds good to me. You know, we've been uh, talking about this idea in 1 Corinthians 9. It's talking about, really, there's two main questions we're looking at. Yeah. What is a pastor, and what does a pastor do? Now, I know if you're like me, how many of you, the first time you met Mike, ever dreamed this guy was really a pastor? <laughs> uh, let's be honest. Let's be honest, right? Yeah. Good, Mike, good. Yeah, yeah, Mike tends to I'm break really the, breaks the mold a little bit, right? You know? And uh, I know that a lot of years in the ministry, and as a pastor, people would come to me, and they'd be, they'd get start talking, and they'd say, Dude, it's great to be a pastor. You like only work one day a week. That's awesome, man. You get paid to work one day a week. And, and after a while, you, you, that tends to rub you a little thin, you know. And you think, really? Honestly? And I know I've had some guys come to me and say, dude, like, how can you be a pastor and, like, you're married and have kids? You know, because they come from a Catholic perspective or something where, like, there's priests and they didn't understand all that. So, Mike, as we talk about this today, I'm, I'm going to guess that there's, there's folks who may have never even grew up in a church or maybe came from a different perspective. When you hear, hear the term pastor, what does that mean to you? What do you think about when you hear the word pastor? Um, let, let me mention this real quick. If you're a, a guest with us this morning, there's something in the program that will allow you to follow along on your phone. It's called Uversion, and uh, your program will tell you how to log in there. And there's some actual some questions that you can answer. You can actually even submit some questions that they will throw up on the screen so that this is kind of interactive between us. Um, sorry, I forgot to mention that at the beginning. Um, what, uh, what do I think of a pastor? Yeah, when, you hear, the, when yeah. you hear the term pastor, you hear about what comes to mind, you know, like, what is a pastor? Sure. Um, it, it's funny you ask that. I, I was at a, uh, uh, an, an exam, it was an oral exam, uh, they call it ordination. Uh, where, where a group of seasoned pastors kind of ask you a lot of questions about, about how you would handle certain situations. Um, as I was sitting there answering questions, they asked me, you know, describe to me the word pastor, what, what does that mean? And <laughs> I know I can say this with you. I wasn't sure if I can say this there because we say a lot of things here that you can't say other places. Um, but I looked at him and I said, honestly, I think the church has neutered the word pastor. And, uh, and I kind of waited for, okay, was that appropriate or not to say? Uh, if it wasn't appropriate, okay, maybe I'm done and I'll just leave now. Um, but, uh, but he asked me to, to go on and, and, and kind of explain what I was meaning with that. And as I explained that, I, I, I took him to a section in scripture in Ephesians where it, uh, it talks about what is called a five-fold ministry. Let me, uh, let me get there real quick. Yeah, it's, it's uh, Ephesians uh, chapter 4, and I believe, uh, starting in verse 11, it says, It was he who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, some to be pastors and teachers. And it says that those gifts were given to the church to prepare God's people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until it reaches unity in the faith. So, so basically, that passage is saying that 
these are, are the gifts that were given to the church to lead the church to reach more people for Christ. And the problem I think that we have within our, our culture is we associate that word pastor as the only leadership within the church. And as I just read this text, it says there's, there's many different forms of leadership that should be within the church. You know, apostles where things are being started and created. Prophets where God's truth is being spoken. Evangelists where more people are being reached with the gospel. Pastors who are shepherding and caring for the people. Teachers who are teaching God's word. And yeah, I, I think we've neutered the word pastor by saying, well, pastor consumes all those things. How do they respond to your statement with that? Uh, he, he responded very well. I was surprised. So I guess you can say some of those words other places. <laughs> they they toss you out. Well, you know, there's a, a lot of us, if, if you're not in a pastor, you think of, hey, I have a certain career path I'm taking. Yeah. I have a, you know, I have a job that I do. Now, how is, in, in, in ministry, a lot of times you hear the words like ministry, like calling. How is what you do as a pastor a little bit different than just a career path or a job that you might do somewhere? Sure. Um, if you would have told me I was, would be doing this when I was in high school, I would have laughed at you, by the way. Um, so much of what I do... I just want you to know, I'm being really nice right now. I know, I could just, I was, is, yeah. I'm holding back, you know. He, he left the door wide open there for me. I know, I know. <laughs> um, so, so much of what I do is, it's not, it's not a typical eight to, eight to five, nine to five job. I mean, it's 24 seven in a lot of ways because I mean, I could literally wake up in the morning and celebrate somebody giving birth to a child and that same day, that night, help somebody bury a loved one. Um, and so, so much of what I do is not 40 hours a week, five days a week. And it's, you're, you're consistently on. And, and unless God calls you to that, there's a lot of weight and responsibility that you've got to carry. Yeah, so help us understand this word calling. I mean, do you, do you wake up one night and hear, Mike, this is God. <laughs> I have a job for you. Yeah, my wife does that sometimes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Mike, this is God. Change the diapers now. Yeah, yeah. It is funny, middle of the night, change diapers. Oh, okay, God. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. Um, God sounds like yeah. Connie right now. <laughs> it does a lot of times. <laughs> um, now, I, I actually studied to be an engineer and worked as an engineer. Um, that explains maybe why I'm a little bit odd. Um, <laughs> sorry, sorry, guys. Yeah, I'm Heather being really nice here, here Mike. We celebrate <laughs> together, go engineers. Um, but but there is there is a something that compels you on the inside, and I, I remember early on saying, you know, I, I want to do something that is going to affect eternity. And, and not to say that you can't be an engineer and affect eternity, I believe you can. And we have guys here that are living proof of that, that are reaching co-workers for Christ. Um, but th there was just a, a stirring within me where, and it was over a, a period of years, um, and I would go to my pastor and I would say, hey, I, have, I think God's calling me to do something other than what I'm doing. And he was wise, he said, go finish school. Um, and I, I went and finished school and came back again and told him again, you know, a year and a half later. And he said, well, you just got married. Go enjoy your wife. Um, that was a great nine months. Um, and then <laughs> no, I, I, I went back again. I said, you know, Bob, this, this isn't going away. There, there's something here that is compelling me to preach the gospel, to, uh, to, to help bring the body together. And, uh, and I was looking for a blessing that, okay, God is speaking into this. Uh, and there's there's different kinds of callings within that. I mean, that was a calling into um, some sort of pastoral ministry. I had no idea what it was. I mean, I'd, I had no idea I'd be sitting here um, working with a church like Awaken. Um, but uh, what you're saying is what makes a pastor's calling unique is the fact that every all of us as believers are called to be 
an example of Christ in our Absolutely, workplace yeah. and to reflect yeah. God to the world around us. Yeah. But there's been this, and it wasn't just an aha moment you woke up and said, I'm going to be a pastor today. Yeah. It was more the stirring of your soul that brought you, that moved you forward. And, and you, you, of course, you went to school, you went to seminary, you prepared, you, you prepared yourself for a lifetime of ministry so God could use you uh, in the role of a pastor, which is a... Uh, 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 what we call a calling that God's placed yeah. upon your life. And I think obviously you see people confirm that in your life. They encouraged you on. They helped you. And God blessed you as you moved out in the ministry. So I think that sort of hits the idea of, you know, what is a pastor? But here comes the this, this second question, the big question maybe all of you might be asking. I know a lot of people have asked us over the time. What in the world does a pastor do? You know, what do you do all day with all your time, you know? And um, when, I, when we were looking at scripture about this, it seemed like the first thing that popped out is this concept of family. It's a little bit different because, I mean, all of us have family responsibilities. Yeah, yeah. But yet, I'm going to read you a passage, Mike, and I want you to sort of respond sure, to this. Sure. Uh, if you uh, have it on your phones or in your Bible, you want to read along, it's actually found in um, 1 Timothy chapter 3, and it's the first seven verses here. And here, uh, Timothy is being challenged about what it means to be an overseer, to be a pastor of a group of people in the church. And uh, in verse 2 it says this, Now the overseer must be above reproach. He must be the husband of one wife, temperate, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, not given to drunkenness, nor violent, uh, not violent but gentle, nor quarrelsome, not a lover of money. I mean, he talks about some pretty character-based issues yeah. there. Then he goes on right to the family. He says he must manage his own family well and see that his children obey him with proper respect. If anyone doesn't know how to manage his own family, how can he uh, take care of God's church? So it seems like at the very beginning, at the very nucleus of what it means to be a pastor, there's this whole issue of family with that. Uh, when you hear that, why do you think family is so important to this whole God's perspective when he wants you to be a pastor? Um, when, when you look at the idea of faithfulness, uh, Jesus talks about it a lot through the Gospels. Um, Matthew, I think it's around chapter 25. Uh, he's talking about a faithful servant, and he tells that servant, he says, that those that are faithful with little will be entrusted with much. And, and the first place that, that we're called to lead as as men is in our homes and as and that's not not just for me that's for all of us as men and, and if i cannot lead in that first area then i'm not being faithful with what god has already given me so how can god trust me to, to lead more if i can't lead my family how am i going to help other men lead their families uh so it's, i i really see it as a as a issue of faithfulness I think it's interesting. I've, if, you, if you look around, where is the hardest place and who is the hardest person to serve in your life? Usually your spouse, right? Mm -hmm. The people in your family. That's the hardest place. That's where the rubber meets the road. Oh, yeah. I think yeah. it's interesting that, that God calls you as a, as a dad, as a pastor, to, to lead your children mm -hmm. and then to love our wives. And he, he throws in this qualifying issue that says, love our wives like Christ loved the church. Ouch. That's yeah. a little painful, yeah. you know, because Christ really was sacrificial. And then the idea about serving our families. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes where we learn the hard work of what it means to be a server of people is to serve in our family. Uh, I know I've told you many times, I think the greatest servant in your wife's life should be you. Absolutely. As, a, as her Absolutely. husband. You should serve your wife. That teaches us yeah. how to serve others if we can first do it in our own home. So that's a, that's a pretty powerful thought with that. When you think about family and ministry and how it all sort of floods together, what's some of your greatest rewards that you've experienced as being a, a, a dad and a father and a husband in ministry? Sure. Um, I, I think one of the greatest things is I, I'm able to do something. I, I, I love working with people. And as I work with people, I'm able to help them develop the fullness of who God created them to be. But as I do that, 
within the context of my family, I'm able to bring my family with me. And I, I, even just a simple thing is the other day, uh, many of us will go, when you have your lunch break or whatever from, from your job. Um, I oftentimes will work right through lunch um, or I'll have meetings and stuff that I need to go to. The other day, I had a lunch time that was free, and instead of working through it, I, I said, you know, I, I'm going to go pick up two of my kids, and uh, we'll go get lunch together. And then I brought them back here to the office, and uh, we acted like my office was a big ship, and I was, as I was preparing stuff for, for uh, what was I working on, uh, for this morning or for maybe for our impending move, I don't remember what it was. But as I was working on stuff, my kids watched me do those things. They, they watched me with my Bible open, as I think our kids should watch all of us with the scriptures open. And so I think one of the, the blessings is uh, my kids can watch me lead others towards Christ. And, and my prayer is that they, they, they learn through that process. Yeah, it's a lot of great memories over the years of doing ministry with our family, with our kids. It's an awesome experience yeah. when you do that. I'm assuming that there's some great benefits, but there's probably some challenges as well, too. What's some of the challenges sure. of having your family along with you as you're doing ministry? Yeah, one, one of the hard things is um, time and, and expectations. Um, be, because it's not a 9 to 5 job, there, there's, there's a lot of times that I'll have to schedule meetings in the evening. And anytime I do that, I have to be cautious because it takes me out of my family. Because um, my family lives like any other family, you know, my kids go to school. Um, and, and so those evenings are, are precious times for any family. And so some of the time constraints are, are difficult. Um, I mean, honestly, my average work week is probably 60, 65 hours a week. Um, and I, I could do more, but I, I kind of cut it off and say, you know, God, I, I trust you to, to use this. You could do more, but you'd like to stay married, right? Exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, uh -huh. that's usually how it works. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the, the other hard thing with that is just expectations. Yeah. Um, not just on me, but expectations that are placed on my family sometimes. Um, a lot of times it's, it's hard. I, I'm pastoring, leading the church. And, and, I, I, and these guys are great about it. My, my wife is not their pastor. Uh, my wife is my wife. Yeah. And she... And she's God when she needs she to is, be. She is, yeah. <laughs> Middle of the night with diapers. Yeah. Um, and, and she... Yeah, she, she's my wife. She's not the church's wife. Yeah. And there's certain, there's certain expectations that are usually placed on a pastor's wife. Uh, you know, the pastor's wife will run a women's ministry or the pastor's wife will play the piano. Um or just a number of things, and none of those are realistic. Well, I know Connie plays chopsticks, yeah. so yeah. she does that pretty good. I've, I've heard her do that. <laughs> That's all um, she's got. <laughs> so, yeah, time yeah. and expectations yeah. are usually the hardest things about, the, about what I do. Yeah. And on the flip side of this, just a little challenge to you when I'm thinking about yeah. it. On the flip side of this, you know, you said my wife is not the church's wife. Yeah. Her husband is not the church's husband either. Yeah. Because when we talked about the idea that uh, as a father, you serve your family. Yeah. I've seen this happen so many times, guys. We get our priorities mixed up, yeah. and we think that instead of serving the Lord, we serve the church. And for a husband and a father and a pastor, we, sometimes we spend all of our time serving the church, thinking we're serving God, and we do a disservice to our yeah. family. So there's a huge balance there because God's called you to serve him yeah. by loving and leading the church. Yeah, this and so many times mixed up and do that. One of the things, I think we're going to head this direction, so I won't say much more than this. The thing that I think causes that the most is when pastors can't keep their hands off the church. Um, it, it's not my church. This is God's church. Um, it's not me, just, it's not just me leading the church. There's others that are leading the church. So the church can function without me. And, and, uh, and sometimes pastor, pretty good, too, yeah, doesn't it? <laughs> sometimes if, if a pastor doesn't realize that, um, he ends up ruin, ruining his family in the process Absolutely. of ruining the church, too. Absolutely. Because so, there's no ahead. S on your chest, right? No, there's not. <laughs> I, I, I've actually said that, yeah. Yeah. Yep. 
Okay, good. Well, I think uh, you've got something unique planned here, don't you? Oh, uh, yeah. I wanted to show this video. Um, the one thing I like about this video, I don't see myself as a typical pastor. And uh, so, yeah, you'll understand in a minute. Can we show that? You might actually see Mike in this video. Are, are just, we good about just that? Just saying. Well, uh, my official responsibility. All right, young people. All right, young people. Settle down. Welcome to midweek. Your pastor is here. And uh, boy, I tell you, young people, um, I know we have been without a youth minister. We've had at least 16 in the past two years, and uh, which is not my fault. Not my fault. But uh, I, young people, I think we've got a humdinger of a person that's going to be leading us in the next century here. Uh, here he is. Would you please welcome Larry? Come on out here, Larry. Hi. 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 Yeah. Hi. Here, here, here's the new youth minister. He's Larry. Hey, kids. Oh. Hey. hey. Well, go ahead. Tell the young people, Larry, what, uh, what, what you'll be doing here at the church. Well, uh, my official responsibilities is, of course, student ministry. Right, right, right. And then right. overseeing education ministry. Right, right, right. And then helping with the worship ministry. Right. And um, custodial. Right. Um, well. I, uh, I mean, I'm also supposed to show for the pastor around. Well, you're part time. Yeah, yeah. You're part -time. It's just. You're part time. You're part time. I mean, we want to make it full time. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. We want to make it full time. Yeah, no, maybe no, someday. Right. Yeah, someday. So, since I'm part time, I also work as a barista over at Starbucks. That's right. Um, that's right. That's right. They, they provide my benefits. Right. Well, um, you're. Right. Well. You are part time. Yeah, you are part time. I'm part time there too. You're part time. I'm part time, -time there. Okay, all right. So, uh, what do you want to do for the young people tonight? If you want to open up the Word and have a little Bible study, you know, something well, like that. I wanted to do it a little more creative, maybe just something a little oh. different. Oh, a little something. Uh huh. Like, yeah. What do, you, what do you mean? So, like you know, a little something, something. I I don't know what you want to explain a little bit more. A little something, something like this. Communion like John McEnroe, you better listen up. I'm teaching the whole, lead word to your moms. I came to drop the bombs. I got more rhymes than the Bible's got psalms. Just like the prodigal son of return. I come to teach you on the scriptures you've learned. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Daniel, and the prophets said that if you're sinning, you better stop it. Red, yellow, black, white, it doesn't matter your color. Come on, everybody stand up and holler. Cause I got skills, so come and get your thrills. We get high on Jesus, we don't need no pills. I came to get down, I came to get down. So get off your feet and jump around. I jump around. No, jump up, jump up, no. No, what are you, what are you doing? Jump, no, jump, jump, no, do jump. not jump. The senior citizens are below us. Stop jumping. Stop jumping. Turn off the music. Everybody, stop. All right. Sit down. Open your Bibles to Leviticus right now. Yo. Yo, yo. What's the special, Mazizel? I was dropping it like it's hot. You, you're fired. <laughs> hey. Have you ever, can you just picture Mike up there jumping around like that, you know? <laughs> I think he might do it someday, so I'd be careful. <laughs> but Mike, as we were talking about, you know, the pastor, and it means so many things to so many different people, and yeah. you, we talk about what a pastor is, and what it means, and what he does. We talked about the idea of dealing with your family. Scripture also says something about the idea of shepherding, 
it, it, uh, as a matter of fact, in First Peter it says, it challenges pastors, be a shepherd of God's flock. When you hear the word shepherd, that's not a term we use every day these, in this day and age. What does that mean to you when you hear the idea, hey, Mike, you be a shepherd to the flock that God's brought to you? Sure, sure. Um, the reason I like that video is within the idea of shepherd, we, we get this idea that every pastor fits the same mold. And that's so far from the truth. A, a pastor is going to work within his gifts, within his personality, uh, within how God has created him. And <clears throat> I mean, at, at Awaken, I think we do things very differently. Um, and part of that is based upon that, that idea that you know, not every pastor is, is the same. Um, as you, within that too, as you look through scripture, um, I was thinking of this earlier, what does it mean to be a shepherd? Right. Um, sheep are dumb. Okay. It, it, no offense. <laughs> um, I, I'm dumb too. <laughs> yeah. um, but, but honestly, I think it's very interesting that as Jesus chose a word to use, he chose the word shepherd. Uh, what somebody, do you think that is? What's unique about the word shepherd? Be, be, well, a shepherd leads sheep, and, and sheep need to be directed and led. And, and, and I, I'm not saying that just the congregation, but even myself in general. Um, there, there are certain things that each of us are gifted in, certain things that each of us um, really, really are miserable at doing as well. And we each need lead in certain areas of our lives because we don't always know where to go. Okay. And so I know for me, I've got numerous guys that I call that help me better lead because, because I'm dumb. <laughs> and, and we all Mike, need... Mike, this is God. Yeah, <laughs> Mike, this is God, you're dumb. Um, we, we all need somebody to speak into our lives, to speak truth and hold us accountable to truth in order to go the direction we need to go. So you're, you're saying that you see your role as a shepherd yeah. is to lead, is to guide, yeah. is to bring mm -hmm. food, so to speak, take sure. them to the source of nutrition, that kind of thing. Absolutely. That, that's what shepherds do. They protect, uh -huh. they take in the good pasture, all those kind of things. Yeah. So now how does, you know, you're sort of uniquely wired up. Is that a nice way, politically correct, <laughs> yeah. to say that? Uniquely yeah. wired up? Okay. I'm really working on this, you know. Okay, so you're uniquely wired up. So how is your personality, your giftedness, play in this whole role of you as a shepherd? Sure, sure. Um, it, it was a startling revelation for me last spring. Uh, we, we had a, one of my mentors come in, one of, one of my shepherds, if you will, uh, come in. And he, 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 he's an incredible pastoral counselor. Um, in fact, what I know about counseling with people, I learned a lot of it from him. And we sat at lunch one of the days he was here, and I was just sharing with him about, about the church and honestly some about the weight of the, the role that I was feeling. And, and I told him, I, I said, Bob, if I have to counsel somebody else, shoot me in the head. I'm done. And, and, and I, when I say that, I wasn't saying I don't like people. I love people. Otherwise, I wouldn't be doing what I do. But my biggest gifts are, are not counseling. I, I do it to help people. And there will be a day within Awaken where we're raising up other people who will do the counseling. Uh, and when I meet with couples, I tell them, I say, you know what? I'm not a counselor. I will help you. you know, we'll meet a couple times, two, three times. And if there's more that needs done, I'm going to help refer you to a counselor. Because I'm not, just not wired that way. It's not, it's not me. And, and so, so much of what I do has to be focused around how, how am I gifted? Where, where does God want me to lead within this? Because there's many different people leading here. Let me follow up with that yeah. question for a second. You say uh, you're wired differently, you're gifted yeah. uniquely. What would you say is your, is your strong suit? What would you say sure. is, your, is your giftedness sure. as a pastor? Sure. You, you mentioned earlier that, uh, you know, I... In that original calling, I went to semin seminary. Um, I, I usually call it cemetery. 
Um, I, I learned more about being a pastor, honestly, through engineering school because I worked with real people. I worked with people, I, I went to school with people that were far from Christ. Um, yeah, and I think there is where God kind of honed some of my gifts. Um, I, I'm much more of a visionary. Um, if you give me an administrative task to do, just ask Bethany, our administrative assistant. Um, she, she will not let me touch administrative stuff because it, it will drive her crazy. That's because she's smart. She is yeah. smart, yeah, I'm dumb. Um, <clears throat> but my, my biggest, the biggest thing that I believe I can give to the church is direction, leadership, and vision. Okay. And if I can raise up others around me that are more gifted in some of those, uh, some of those areas of counseling, some of those areas of administration, um, the church will be so much better off. Well, it sounds like there's an expanded role to what a pastor really does. And we looked yeah. at the beginning, there was that nucleus. The pastor needs yeah. to, to care for and take care of your family and lead it home. Yeah. And then there's a bigger picture, sort of like a bigger concentric circle there, which says, okay, now you need to be a shepherd to the flock. Yeah. And it seems like, I don't know what your experience is, there's been a lot of churches that do a great job of shepherding, but they don't go much past that. Yeah. And, I, and God has uniquely gifted you in the area of vision. As a matter of fact, that's one of the, 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 the sort of the next step to take things out, this whole idea of being a vision caster. How is pastoring and vision connected, and what do those mean to you? Sure. Uh, in Proverbs, it says, without vision, people perish. Um, you can't lead somebody if you don't have anywhere to take them. And vision is all about understanding, okay, where are we going? Uh, within that, though, one of the things I had to realize is over the last couple years, um, this might sound kind of crude, your vision sucks. Um, as we started the church, my vision sucked. Well, that's why I wear glasses. Yeah, so, yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was just really bad. <clears throat> um, that's as good as it gets. As I, I had to realize that it's, it's not my vision. Uh, my vision had to die honestly. Now, there's certain components within Awaken that are kind of what we intended when we moved here to start the church. I mean, one of those, obviously, is you're always going to be sending people out. Right. And so our goal is to send, send people out. In fact, we come up with goals and vision for each year. As we get ready to enter our new year in September, one of our goals is to double the amount of people we sent out of here last year. Um, not too many churches do that. But our, our, our vision within that is how can we have a wider spread influence with the gospel uh, worldwide? Mm -hmm. And that's one of the reasons that drove us here was you can have an impact worldwide by being in this area because of the transientness and the military and so forth. And, but a lot of what we do too isn't necessar wasn't necessarily on our scope. And so my vision had to, had to die. And God had to bring to life a work that was truly his mm. and, and not mine. So it's, it's almost like the vision of Awaken, not only there's an initial vision that brought you here, the yeah. potential, yeah. The, yeah. the need for Christ, the, yeah. what you could do with the people here. Yeah. But then yeah. God sort of evolved that in a way, yeah. and that vision has grown larger than what you could imagine. It is, it is. And, 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 and a lot of that is based upon the people that God brings. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, Four years ago when we moved here, two years ago when we launched out the church, I never would have dreamt that we would be focusing on human sex trafficking as a church. Right. Um, and, and God, that's a vision that God stirred within the church based upon people that he's brought. And, and, I, and that even goes back to giftedness of leadership. Uh, I, I don't lead within that area. We have Mike Hicksonball who, who leads in that area, who, who, who is much more gifted to lead in that area, I believe. And so uh, we, another vision we have is to, to really help men become men okay. and stop being little boys and to teach men how to lead and love their families. And, I mean, and those, those, those are pieces of vision that God kind of erupts himself hmm. as you just continue to walk in obedience. Well, if I ask you yeah. to share your heart for a second, yeah. I think maybe you've just done some of that. Sure. But... Uh, if you could add anything else to that, what is your vision that God has laid upon you yeah. for 
our Awakened Church family? What's your vision with that? Sure. Uh, my heart is to reach those far from Christ. And that's one of the things I love the most about Awaken. And I feel very blessed to lead in a church like Awaken um, because I've been to a lot of churches. Um, I have visited over 50 churches. I haven't worked in 50 churches, but I have seen the inner workings of probably over 50 churches through different uh, different trips and different things that I've had to do throughout um, my minimal years of ministry. And one of the things that, that I see lacking in most churches is just that willingness to step out beyond our comfort. And, and I see that within our people um, where we, we step up to the plate to reach those that are far from Christ. And we even have the saying in the church, we say, we will do anything short of sin to reach somebody with the gospel. And uh, <clears throat> our, so, so our vision is to reach those that are far, to, to have an impact within human trafficking. Our vision, too, is, is and we feel God has laid this upon us, is not just to plant, awaken, and see it grow to become this humongous church. And people ask me, well, how big is Awaken going to be? I don't know. Go ask God. Yeah. Um, because it's not me who creates the growth. It's God who creates the growth. We just prepare for that. And my heart is to see churches planted all through the Hampton Roads area and to see other guys here that are raised up to go lead those churches. Um, because I, I'm much more interested in multiplication multiplication cannot happen if I'm holding on to stuff. And, and so our vision is to, to push things out, to reach those that are far from Christ, to see them raise up, mature in their, in their walk with Christ. And let's push them out. Let's go plant some more churches. Let's go reach other areas of the city, uh, of the area of the world that, uh, that, that we can't do from just here. Well, one of the things I think is very unique about Awaken. Yeah. And I don't know if I, not a show of hands, but maybe just to think about this. How many of you were attracted to the idea that Awaken thinks outside the box? That Awaken reaches out to, to others? And maybe some of you were the recipient of that. Because Awaken has been known in this community yeah. as a church that constantly goes out. It's not about all what happens in here. It's about sending people out to make contact with people. Yeah. I look around the room, I, I see some people we met in the malls, we met in the parks, we met in different places like that. Yeah. As you're just out there being... God's face in the community yeah. and running into people. Yeah. And I, so many times people think, oh, church, you just go there and then you leave. But Awaken's about being the church that goes out into the world and makes a difference. Yeah. When that happens, that's pretty exciting. And that's an exciting vision to have. So w there was four areas we wanted to touch on. The yeah. idea of the nucleus, you're, you're a, a, a family man yeah. that has to take care of your family and lead sure. there. Then beyond that, you're a shepherd that shepherds and takes care of and feeds and leads the church. Then you have to be in a bigger, sort of bigger circle, a visionary that casts vision so that we as Awaken, as we gather around, we can have an idea where God's leading you and where yeah. God wants to lead us if we go out into our community. Yeah. And then finally, you look at that and say, with that huge vision, can you possibly do that yourself? Yeah. And the answer is? Uh, sure. <laughs> yeah, right. You're yeah, insane, abs bro. Absolutely You're not. insane. Um, yeah, absolutely not. So that, that brings upon the, yeah. four, the four thing, and yeah. what is that? Uh, leadership development, um, and that's that's really where I believe I'm gifted at as well. And, and I don't say that in a um, prideful way, cocky way. Um, I, I I think that we need to be honest about who we are and say, okay, this is how I'm designed. Therefore, God, how can you use this? How do you want to use this? And one of my passions is raising up other leaders. And uh, for example, I was uh, gone for a week uh, in June. And when I got back, people were coming up to me asking me, hey, I know that we're helping this trafficking victim. Uh, what, do I, what, what can I do? And I looked at him and I said, bro, I have no idea what you're talking about. Um, and I loved saying that. Because Awaken is not just consistent upon my leadership. Awaken is growing and expanding. And, and we're outgrowing this facility and we're looking to move out of here in the fall. Um, and we're excited for what God's going to bring this fall. And then many more people we can reach with the gospel. But that is not, that, that doesn't hinge upon me. 
that, that hinges upon God moving us forward based upon the leadership that has been developed and we're continuing to develop. I don't think that you can ever have enough leaders in an organization. Well, I see how is we, we looked at this one passage in 2 yeah. Timothy 2.2. 2. It says, entrust to reliable men who will be qualified to teach others. And then 1 Corinthians, Paul says, follow my example as I follow example of Christ. Absolutely. How does that all fit into this concept of leadership development? Sure, sure. Um, I, I, I think that You, you have to you have to lead through example and I think that's why it goes back to family is so important and if I'm not leading within my family I, I can't lead the church well and then there, there's the idea of shepherding I, I have to be able to shepherd people and people shepherd differently and that we talked about that uh, my biggest attributes to shepherding our people, I believe, is giving vision and, and creating leadership and, and passing things off. Um, and, and so as, as we move into the future, the biggest thing that I can do is let others lead. And, and I have been in some places where, oh my gosh, people destroy their leadership. Um, I've been in places in meetings with other pastors and they throw their leadership under the bus and, and I'm thinking how unhealthy is that you know I, I, have, I go to bat for, for our leadership um, I've had people come to me and say I, I don't like some of the leadership you have and I look at them and I say okay have a nice day you can go down the street because that's not going to change um, because I, I've, I, I'm very how do I say this? Awaken right now is fun to lead. And it's fun because I'm not the only one leading it. There are many others here that are sacrificing time, are sacrificing their energies. Not for me. It's not for me. It's not even for Awaken. It's for the advancement of the gospel. And as we move into the future, one of the greatest assets I believe that we have and are continuing to develop are new leaders, uh, people that are leading their families, people that are leading in their workplaces by, by sharing their faith and reaching others for Christ, by inviting others in, uh, are leading in their communities and their neighborhoods, are, are stepping up to the plate here and helping and assisting those that are walking through difficult times. And that's, that's one of the most exciting things about what we're doing right now is we're seeing leadership expand. Well, as we get ready to close off, yeah. let me just, maybe one last thought here, one last thing. And I'm just gonna ask you, why don't you just share your heart with uh, Awaken here? Why don't you hear well, what you're excited, what God is doing, where God wants to take you, that kind of thing. Maybe just take a moment, just share your heart. Uh, you know, if you had, you know, three minutes, you could say whatever you wanted to Awaken, what would that be? Sure, they actually give me 50 minutes every week. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I would honestly just say how excited I am for what God's doing here um, I, I don't do what I do because it's easy um, I, I don't do what I do because I can live this incredible lifestyle um, I, I do this because of the calling we talked about. And I, I know a lot of other churches and a lot of other pastors. Um, and, and I've even had people come say, hey, why don't you come over here? And I said, why? I, I don't want to. This is fun. Um, we, we do things very differently and Awaken is developing not just on my personality, but the personality of the body. Um, this, is, this is God's church, but he's entrusted it to us, um, not, not just me. And as we move into the future, and I'm so excited for what God's 
doing now and is going to do down the road. And I'm excited that there, there's people here who, you know, a year ago had no idea who Jesus was and now are following hard after Christ, are seeing their lives changed, and, and they're, they're leading this. Um, and that, that's fun. That's fun. It, it's fun to work alongside other people with common vision. Uh, of reaching others that are far from Christ. It's fun to work alongside others that are excited about the advancement of the gospel. It's honestly, it's fun working around other people that are, we, we say we're a church for screwed up people. It's fun working with other people that are screwed up. Um, because we're all working on stuff together, um, not just reaching more people, but saying, oh, how do I, God, what does it mean for me to give over this other area of my life? Or God, what does it mean for me to, to know you more? And we're, we're helping and encouraging one another in that process. Um, and so it's, yeah, it's fun to be able to do this uh, because of the people that, that, uh, that I get to do this with. Sounds great. You know, as, let me ask you this one question as we close off here. Uh, when I think about Awaken, one word that constantly pops in my mind, and let me see if you, you agree with this or, 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 or not, but one word that pops in my mind is life change. Yeah. How many people's lives have been changed because the impact of the gospel of Jesus Christ through the ministry of Awakened Church and, the, and Awakened Church family. So to me, that's exciting. I, loved it. I love to see that. So um, anything that you want to close off with or should we, uh, can I just have a word of prayer for you and for Awaken? Um, do we have some, was there a question? Oh, I'm Two sorry. questions? I'm Good, yeah. What are those real quick? You want to read that? Can you see that? Yeah, yeah. What has okay. been your biggest challenge at Awaken? What's been the biggest challenge? Um, honestly, it's probably when, when I moved my family here. Um, it was my wife and I and uh, another guy that met in my living room. Uh, and we were there for, it was almost two years before the church met publicly. And during those two years, um, our good-looking keyboardist, um, <laughs> yeah, he's, he's hiding in the back, ca came and was a part. And John and Rachel, who, who aren't here this morning, uh, he's on travel for work. But those early years were really difficult. Um, I was talking to Carrie, who played drums this morning on the way here, and I told her, I said, I remember the first Sunday you came, and it, it was horrible. Um, <laughs> not because she came, right? <laughs> no, no, not because she came. Um, I was embarrassed when she came. Yeah. I was like, yeah, we call this church. Um, but that was some of the hardest times, trying to get things yeah. going. But it was sometimes some of the most rewarding times, too. Um, because even now, there's, there's difficulties. And when people come together to overcome, yeah. um, growth happens. Well, now you got this awesome band. And I remember before, it was an iPod with the speakers. It was. That you had it was, in the yeah. living room of your house, you know. Just cause definitely an upgrade here. Definitely just, an upgrade. Just because they didn't want me to sing. That's right. Um, I, was there another I think question? there's one more, yeah. One more? Should a pastor tell me how to vote? Should a pastor tell me how to vote? <laughs> <laughs> vote for me. <Yeah>. Um, <laughs> vote for Pedro. Uh, <laughs> one of the things that we try not, one of the things that absolutely drives me crazy is we associate a certain political party with, with the church. And I'll tell you what, there's p both all political parties are screwed up in some sense. And we, we just need to be cautious, and we're very cautious as a church, especially as we get ready to move into an election year. Um, I, I really don't share my political views on stage um, because I care much more about sharing Christ. Um, is the political scene important within our country? Absolutely. Um, does it help lead our country? Absolutely. But you can't legislate morality. You can't legislate 
somebody giving their life to Christ. And the, the thing that, that I focus on and that the church focuses on is how do we help people come to identify who Jesus is and see their life change as, as a result. And, uh, yeah, so we don't really focus much on politics within the church. So Sounds good. Any more questions back? That was it. Yeah, I think, I think uh, this guy's got one. Oh, Dustin. What's this? Okay. <laughs> I have never been coordinating anything I wear, so yes, actually I did, Dustin. I really did, you know. <laughs> he he told me this morning he thought it made him look skinny. Yeah. Any th any help I can get, dude. That's what I do, man. <laughs> so was that all the questions in the back? Awesome. Um, yeah. Let me just uh, we'll wrap up and say. Uh, I'm excited for where God's leading us in the future, and I, I'm excited for how God has brought us together and others that couldn't be here this morning with summer travels and that, and excited for what God's going to do in us and through us as we get ready to move into the fall. So thanks for being a part of the ride, I guess. It's a journey. It's a ride, and uh, excited to see where God takes us next. So thanks, guys. You want to pray and sure. close us? As I'll pray as the band comes up and uh, we get ready to close the service. So, Lord, we thank you so much for this day. Thank you for the privilege of just being here as Awaken. And God, as we go on through this series, Christians Gone Wild, looking at 1 Corinthians, and coming to the part where it talks about pastors, I just thank you so much for, for Mike. I thank you that he's here as our pastor, that he loves you, he loves his family, he shepherds our church, he has vision that you've imparted to him, vision that comes from on high to try to make this church an impact in our community and is willing to take time to develop leaders so the church can grow. God, there's so much involved. We just pray that you'll protect him and his family and encourage them and strengthen them as they try to lead. God, we pray that Awaken can have uh, the kind of impact that's already seen. I love the fact that Awaken is full of people whose lives have been changed by the truth of Jesus Christ. What an awesome thing. What a wonderful thing to be a part of. God, we pray that you continue to bless awake and continue to multiply them, not so they can say, look at our numbers, but so that we can see more lives changed, more people come to know you, more people involved in a ministry of serving and reaching others with the gospel and just serving others who, who are in need. God, thank you so much that you love us. Thank you so much that you gave us pastors to help shepherd us and lead us. And I thank you, God, that we can be a part of our awakened family. Bless us today as we, as we close off in song. Bless us as we go out and make a difference in the world in which you put us, Father. We ask in Jesus' name, amen.